So we're going to look at a new model of the atom that was discovered by or developed by J.J. Thompson back in 1897. So let's look at his model of the atom. Really quickly, I want to review what our first model of the atom was, and that was Dalton's model of the atom. Dalton's atom looked like this. It had no internal structure. It was just a solid sphere. You could think of it like a ping pong ball or a baseball or some sort of solid sphere. There was nothing inside of it. It was just there. Then Thompson came around, and we have two sets of evidence. We have evidence first from our class. We have evidence of attraction and repulsion when we did the sticky tape activity. I provided you with charged pieces of tape, and you saw that like charges repelled and opposite charges were attracted to each other, just like with magnets. So opposites attract and like things repel. Thompson saw this when he did work with a cathode ray tube. When he worked with this tube, it was a long tube, it didn't look exactly like this, I don't have it drawing skills, so this is simplified, but he shot this beam called a cathode ray through the tube, and there were two plates. When the plates were not charged, the beam went straight through, right as he predicted. When he applied a positive charge to one plate and a negative charge to the other, he saw that the beam bent when it hit those plates and it bent towards the positive side. If he reversed the charges, flipped them the other way, so the top plate was negative and the bottom plate was positive, the beam still bent towards the positive side of the tube. It was always attracted to the positive plate, therefore he concluded that the beam must be negatively charged because we know that opposites attract. So this beam has to have a negative charge. That's the conclusion from the evidence. That means that atoms have to be able to have charge. Since everything is made up of atoms, in order for something to be negatively charged, the atoms themselves must be negatively charged. So we have both positive and negative charges. If you have one, you have to have the other. So if we conclude that we can have negative charges, they must also be able to um, have positive charges. So this is what Thompson's model of the atom looks like. It's commonly referred to as the plum pudding model which is a dessert sort of dish from England. Um, I like to think of it as the chocolate chip cookie model because that's something that we see a lot more often. In this atom, it's the body, the bulk of the atom is positive. We don't have specific positive charges yet. Just the body of the atom as a whole is positive. And then it has negative charges randomly distributed throughout the atom. So if you think of the dough part of your chocolate chip cookie is positively charged, and then the chocolate chips are the negatively charged pieces. So those are the pieces that are randomly distributed through your positively charged cookie dough. With this model, we can have neutral atoms, we can have negative atoms, and we can have positive atoms. If we're going to have neutral atoms, we must have equal amounts of, negative, or of po ne positive and negative. So if we have three positives in here, we have to have three negative charges as well. If we think of this in terms of numbers, they're gonna balance out. If you had negative three and positive three, you end up with zero, it's overall neutral. If we want a negative number, we have to have more negatives than positives. So again, I have three positives here. If I wanted this to be a negative atom, I could add four negatives. Now my negatives outweigh the positives. Negative four plus positive three gets you a negative one. Overall, the atom is negative. If we want this to be positive, we need fewer negatives than the positives. So if I have three positives here, I could add just two negative charges. If I have positive three and negative two, that gets me a positive one left over. So this is a positive atom. If I wanted this to be positive two, I could have just one negative charge. If I wanted this to be negative two, I could add another electron. So depending on how many negative charges you have would depend on how negative or how positive your overall atom is. So how exactly does an atom become charged? Well, the atom is going to gain or lose its negative charges. Notice in that previous example, I wasn't changing the positives. I was only changing the negatives. 
the negative charges have to be a particle if they're gonna move. If something's gonna enter or exit an atom, it has to actually be a particle in order for it to have mobility. That means our negative charge is an electron. That's what it was named. So Thompson's model has an overall positive body with negative, negative charges, which we call electrons, randomly distributed. So there are three main features. Atoms now have subatomic particles. They have internal structure. And those subatomic particles are called electrons. They can be abbreviated E with a little negative sign because they're negatively charged particles. These electrons are negatively charged. That's why we write it with a little minus. And then electrons are randomly distributed throughout the atom and they're mobile. They can move within the atom to one side or the other. They can leave the atom. They can enter an atom to make it positively or negatively charged.